hello so if you're wondering why am i live i'm just on a challenge so you're gonna see me live for a while and when i come here on live i wanted to make good use of the live session and leave a digital footprint like like a digital diary of what i'm sharing so it could be sharing something that i've learned or a story which probably also has a lesson to it so it's something that I would like to clock down in the memory lane when I look back a year later when Facebook reminds me of what I've been doing so today I'm going to share this story about my business mentor and I never had a business mentor when I first had the opportunity to have a business mentor i was so excited uh yeah, i was so excited because he's so, he's someone who is already retired he has achieved financial freedom and the financial freedom he has is probably good enough for the next two to three generation and he's he has the qualities of a leader that i admire um, he's a good listener, he's kind, he's very patient, very calm. So I was really excited when he readily agreed to be my business mentor. So, Sam, so whoever's coming on live, do type in and let me know who is it and I acknowledge. So, when when he agreed to be my business mentor, I was really excited. So we started organizing coffee sessions. Coffee sessions whereby he would share with me some ideas on how to get my business running. And at that point in time, I was still, still, oh, and I was still working. So I was building a business by the side. <laughs> you know, I'm just very conservative. I want to build it by the side until it kind of stabilized, matches my day income, then I'll leave my day job, you know, that's usually the plan. So, we arranged to meet for coffee and was at a country club. I remember I had to take a cab, it was somewhere far in. I took a cab, I was really nervous because he's someone whom I admire and yet, it's, you admire someone and yet sometimes it can be a bit intimidating. So we sat down, we have coffee and he started teaching me what to do. So I told him, I'm actually looking to build a second income stream. As you know, that's probably my third income stream. So I'm looking to build my third income stream that it matches my first income stream. And he said, great, I will teach you how to do it because you're not the first I mentored. So if the people who before you did exactly what I told them to do and they've earned millions of dollars, you shall not be an exception great so I took down actually I turned on my recorder to make sure that I didn't miss a single word he told me so he gave me three tasks to do and the tasks were not difficult the first task was to always be selling to one person every day just making a pitch whether if you actually close the deal that's a different story second was to get to know people whether you're on a on a queue when you're in a queue just strike a conversation with someone, get to know people, three people. And the third thing was to do this continuously for at least 90 days. And it sounded so simple, it sounded so simple. But the minute he gave me the three tasks, I started telling him, Nick, this is, but I've got a day job. So I got this, I got that, and I was coming, coming up with lots of reasons why I can't do it. And then Nick sat, kept quiet, leaned back, and looked at me. Elin, you are like a frog in the pen. I was like, what do you mean? Nicholas, what do you mean by I'm like a frog in the pen? Yeah, I get that right now you have a very comfortable job. Uh, you're making a six-figure income and there's really absolutely no need for you to step out of your work. And I totally agree with him. So right now you're like this frog. You're sitting in a 
hand with warm water you feel like it's a jacuzzi it's nice it's cozy but you do not know that every single minute the temperature is being tuned up and give it a bit more time you'll be cooked now that really woke me up you see often we ask so what do you want and we might say that oh I don't really know what I want but actually underlying that is more because we do not believe we can have what we want so now that I think I know what I want I have someone to show me how to do it and when he was showing me how to do it I have lots of resistance doing it and that's because I, I probably don't believe I could have what I want and to go one more layer, I actually do not want to do the work that he was telling me to do because I was afraid because I didn't believe I could have what I want. I was afraid that if I do exactly what he told me to do and what he told me to do has worked for others and if I do it and I don't get the results, then it's all on me. So the stakes are high. But when he told me that story about me being a frog being cooked in a pan I totally resonate that because being in a corporate world is very common that when times are good everybody get good bonuses but when times are doing not so well um, it's easy to get that reorganization restructured and maybe your services are being made redundant and that's very highly common in the environment I'm in because I was working for a multinational corporation so, and I did what he told me to do. So, why am I sharing this story is that probably this couple of days, we don't, maybe for you as well, we don't have much chance to travel and we stay home more. Maybe it's a time to think about what is it that you want. And don't be too concerned about how to do it yet, but rather is it possible for you to believe that what you ask is believable? This too, that I know why I want it and I believe I can truly have it. Then maybe it's easier to be willing to do whatever it takes to achieve what you're asking for. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this story. If you like, do hashtag live or replay. If you're watching this, if you enjoy it, do hashtag and let me know. I'll come back live again for the next couple more days. Uh, I do have some ideas of what I'm going to share, but uh, I'll, I'll save it. And till then, see you. Bye-bye.